to Educator.com's AP English Language and Composition course. This lesson is part of our crash course on rhetoric, and it's on logical fallacies. Let's get started. All right. This lesson is going to be pretty simple. We're going to start by asking what is a fallacy, and then we're going to look at 14 extremely common logical fallacies that you'll have to watch out for both in what you read on the exam and in the essays you'll write. So to begin with, what is a fallacy? Well, a logical fallacy is an error in reasoning. It's a flaw in logic. It's where your brain makes a mistake, where you're not paying enough attention, where you're not thinking things through. And unfortunately, they're extremely common among non-professional writers, non-professional reasoners. Now, there are two major categories of fallacy. Inductive fallacies arise when an arguer leaps to a conclusion on the basis of insufficient or wrong evidence. He, he doesn't have the right evidence, he doesn't have enough, but he leaps to a conclusion anyway. It's an inductive fallacy. We'll look at some examples. Deductive fallacies are, of course, flaws in deductive reasoning, and they happen when an argue, arguer fails to follow the logic of a series of statements. So basically, since deductive reasoning is where you reason from general statements to specific ones, in a deductive fallacy, you don't follow the logic of your own general statements, and therefore, you end up with the wrong specific. Now, here's the problem. Many writers use fallacies in place of actual reasoning. You'll see them used often in advertising, in political discourse. They're all over the place. Do not be fooled, especially on the exam, because I guarantee you, if there are logical fallacies in the passages you're writing about, the, uh, the essay readers for the AP test will know about them, and they will expect you to spot them. So, if you see a logical fallacy, don't be fooled. All right. Our first common logical fallacy is called hasty generalization. In this fallacy, the arguer draws conclusions based on insufficient evidence. Many prejudices and superstitions are the results of hasty generalizations. So basically, somebody has only a couple of data points and they draw a big conclusion from it that isn't really supported by the data they've got. So our example here is, all Asians are naturally better at math than people of other ethnicities. You meet a couple of people who are of Chinese or Japanese or Korean extraction or whatever. They happen to be good at math and you go away thinking, wow, everybody from Asia is really good at math. No, the two people you met are really good at math. There are people who are good at math in pretty much every ethnicity, but you have a small enough uh, data sample or enough bias to start with, and you draw a hasty generalization, in this case, a somewhat racist one. All right, our second logical fallacy is called faulty use of authority. Now, when you use authority in an argument, you're basically referring to somebody who is respected or a respected source of information and saying, because this source is respected, you can believe what they say, therefore you can believe what I say. Well, faulty use of authority is when you do that wrong. In this fallacy, the arguer cites an authority to back up his or her argument when either a, the authority is not really that much of an authority, or B, there is significant difference of opinion among authorities on the subject, and the arguer doesn't mention that. The, argu the arguer goes, well, everybody in the scientific community says this. Well, no, actually, there's about a dozen guys over at this university who say something different, and maybe they have good reason. Now, my favorite example of faulty use of authority is something that I get from students all the time, and it is, I read it on the internet. It must be true. I hate to tell you this, the fact that you read it on the internet means bupkis. <laughs> the internet is a faulty authority. You can't just say, I read it on Wikipedia, it must be true. Wikipedia is written by people on the internet, not all of whom are trustworthy. So, it's a falsy, faulty use of authority. You're using the internet like it's an authority, it's really not, and you end up with a logical error. Our third logical fallacy is probably my favorite mostly because it's so insane. It's called the post hoc fallacy. Now, it comes from the Latin phrase post hoc ergo propter hoc, which means after this, therefore because of this. Now, basically, this is, this is a doubtful cause fallacy. Uh, somebody assumes that just because one thing happens after another thing, they assume that the, that the first thing must have caused the second thing. The classic example of this is the rooster who crows, and then the sun comes up, and he thinks that his crowing causes the sun to rise. This is, of course, a really dumb bird. But the example I like to use is what I call the version in the volcano. Okay, you're living near a volcano, the volcano is erupting, the people in the no local village freak out, the village shaman says, well, if we sacrifice a virgin and throw her into the volcano, the volcano gods will be appeased and it'll stop erupting, and they grab somebody and throw them in the volcano, and the volcano stops erupting, and the shaman goes, well, it stopped erupting, the sacrifice must have been what done it. Uh, no, actually, there was probably another cause, it probably didn't have anything to do with throwing a human body in there, unless it was a really small volcano and the body plugged it up. But, again, because one event followed another event, somebody assumed that the first event must have caused the second, they made the post hoc fallacy, 
And this is how people get thrown into volcanoes. Don't do that. Don't engage in the post hoc fallacy, and definitely don't throw people into volcanoes.